<laughs> Motherfucker! What? I want to learn how to world build. Uh, oh, okay, what do you want to learn? I want to know how to name cities, draw maps, write history, and learn how to make my world fun for my players to run around in like in Critical Role or Dimension 20 or Tales of Talendia. Okay, okay, shush, 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 shush. Sweet summer child. World building is a fine art that takes time and effort, especially if you want to do it right. But you need to understand something. Once you start the world builder's path, there is no going back. Are you sure this is something you want to do? Uh, y yeah? Okay, let's do it then. Go ahead and roll insight. Howdy folks, I'm Dabas Volt, and welcome to Rolling Insight, the Dungeons and Dragons series where I give you some insight on topics for the world's greatest role-playing game. This week, I'll be starting a multi-part series of Rolling Insights centered around world building. This episode will focus on the overall concept of world building, while future videos will go into details about filling up settlements, giving the world history, and even etymology. But before we can get into stuff like giving the world its own Silmarillion or even a map, we have to wrap our heads around what what the world is. So, what is a world? In D&D terms, it wouldn't really be called a world per se, unless you plan on planet hopping like in Spelljammer. The more appropriate term for world in this case would be setting. Settings can be anything. Anything? Anything. Literally, they can be an entire planet, one of its continents, one or more of the countries in that continent, or even just a few cities in the country. The setting can be as large or as small as you want. These settings contain everything your player characters need to fully complete their adventure, from NPCs to in-universe lore to uncover, and BBEGs to discover and defeat with the lost knowledge they found through the NPCs they spoke to. Amongst the main stuff that holds up the story, there's also background stuff like gods, culture, legends, religions, conflict, and every other part of a moving world that reaches outside of the PC's immediate field of view. Now I know what you're thinking. It's either, I want to make everything, get me to the good stuff already, or <coughs> I got a lot of homework to do. Trust me when I say, neither of these is nor must be the case. I have run campaigns in both pre-established settings like Faerun, Witchlight, and Ravenloft, as well as my own personal homebrew campaigns. In these experiences, I can conclusively say it doesn't fucking matter. Your players will most likely be down with whatever, as long as they get to play a cool character that does 24 d6 damage at level 5 because of some racial feat they picked up on DM's guild. For newcomers, I would recommend running in a pre-written setting that you can research and run with your own cherry-flavored fuckery. But Dabbas, this is a video about building your own world. Why are you telling us to run pre-written stuff? Well, as I said, you add in your own flavor to the adventure. Maybe you reskin Lost Minds of Fandelver to be Christmas themed given the holiday season. Or you really crank it up to 11 and reskin Ravenloft as Candyland. That would be fun to run. The point is, reskinning is a valid form of world building, and it's a fantastic way of learning how to manipulate things within a framework rather than starting from scratch. It's like getting into paint by the colors and Legos before jumping into assembling and painting 40k. The point is, granting yourself a solid foundation of knowledge no. to expand upon. From here, you can start asking yourself questions like, why is the world the way it is? Where did the gods come from? How do they influence the world? You know, existential questions that keep you up until 3 in the morning. But let's say you've been DMing pre-writtens for a while and have some ideas or notes for your own personal world. Well, I have a few questions for you. First question, why do you want to do this? Why? There is every possibility that you only want to create a world because you think writing is fun, in which case, Great! Writing is an excellent form of self-expression and a great tool to refine for both personal and professional life. However, if your passion is writing and not running D&D, then you shouldn't write campaigns. You should write books. That's not to say the two are mutually exclusive, but writers like this usually fall down the paralysis path and their worlds are never good enough for a table. Don't be the DM that falls down this path. Moving on. Does this world accomplish something that other pre-written settings cannot or have not? I'd hate to pull the Simpsons did it card, but a lot of people have done a lot of writing since even before D&D. We've been writing nonsense and fantasy since ancient Greece. Now I'm sure Homer and Pythagoras weren't writing campaigns for AD&D, but this hobby has existed since the 70s. That's 50 years of D&D being written, published, and homebrewed. There's every chance your idea already exists in a book somewhere. 
Don't let this discourage you though. If you find that setting or campaign, just add your cherry flavor to it. Finally, are there no campaigns out there that run something like what you're doing? And is there no way to retrofit the settings you've run to fit with your story? If you answered no to any of these questions, fucking if you answered no to any of these questions, then find a setting and save yourself the burden. If you answered yes to all of these, <laughs> shit, I don't know what we're still doing here, we got work to do. Second question. Yes, this is the second question. How long do you want the campaign to run for? This is my most important question, and one that determines whether this world is built in a day or over the course of years. If you just want to run a one-shot, then your world should be no bigger than one town with a couple of NPCs in the major location for the one-shot, if the town itself isn't the major location. If you're running something longer, more the style of pre-written or actual plays you've seen online, don't. But I'm serious, don't. Not for your first time at least. I know there's a desire within you to make a whole world Tolkien style, but I hate to break this to you. You are not John Ronald Ruel Tolkien. Tolkien had a history of world building in the form of conlangs before he ever wrote the name Gandalf. And in true world builder fashion, he didn't even come up with that name. He pulled it from the Elder Edda along with a bunch of other names for the dwarves. The point is, if you want to write a Silmarillion out the gate, don't. You will burn yourself out before you even get to the main quest. So where do we start? Well, we'll start small with our third and final question. What even is the main quest? What y'all doing? Y'all rolling? What are your player characters doing? This should be the first thing you write before you ever name a town or person or anything for that matter. You might be inclined to ask yourself, why are the players doing this? Why? What's the purpose? But don't. The point of a one-shot is to test the waters of both your players and your world-building abilities. Your world doesn't have room for whys and hows. But Dabis, how am I supposed to build a world with only one town? You don't. Your players do. Tell them you're running a level 20 one-shot to assemble a world and they will write the world for you. Give them the reins to write backstories with as much or as little detail as they want. Some will write legends, while others will write the mundane. You fill those blanks in between and connect the stories and actions of the player's characters. Or don't. Leave it open-ended. Allow your players to spin this complicated web of tales for future players and their characters to unravel and make sense of. Even better, have those same level 20 characters players live the lives of adventurers in a world that marinated for a few centuries after the events of the one shot. Let them experience how the world evolved after the incidents of the one shot and see the fallout of their actions. This is how I world build. I allow things to go unfinished, prophecies unfulfilled, tales forgotten to time, conflicts never resolved. The point of your adventure should be to resolve the problems in the world, fulfill or break the prophecies, Take the world steeped in chaos and bring it to order and harmony. But most importantly, above all else, you and your players should have fun. Your job as a DM is to present your players with scenarios for their characters to resolve through cunning or combat. You are a coach who sets up the field for them to navigate. The DM wears a lot of hats, and before you're a writer, you're a keeper of peace, master of rules, and most importantly, a snack dispenser. But seriously, writing everything before it happens only forces your players to play along with your world rather than create their own stories and tales. It's a collaborative storytelling role-playing game, not a live reading of the Iliad. By letting them write the narrative and have lasting consequences in your world, it not only grants them freedom, but grants them investment. They will be able to see how one small event unfolded over the course of 800 years, how planting the small tree gave life to the most important city on the whole continent. The feedback will be powerful seeing the world they helped assemble, knowing it's theirs just as much as it is yours, and this will give them the drive to preserve it as it is the collective brainchild of everyone at the table. <sighs> Alright, now that we've got the foundation laid, we can start to build the frame. We can take our world from the creative juices that make up its waters and form land, cultures, and history. And that's just what we'll do next time on Rolling Insight. Have a good one.